Welcome back to the GSMC Golf Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm back talking in my second segment, talking about the weekend superlatives and leaderboard review from the Rock and Mortgage Classic. This tournament was was really fun for me, seeing a lot of these young guys in the field making a name for themselves without the big guns in this field, without Scotty Scheffler, Rory McIlroy, without uh, Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas. You know, the names that kind of distract you from other guys that are playing some really good golf, like Akshay Batia. And we're going to get right talking into right into talking about this young guy because he goes out there, shoots 8 under on round 1, and it's looking fantastic. And it's looking like this is it. He goes four under on his last three holes of his round on round one to get that 64. But going through the weekend, he looked so good. He looked like he was going tape to tape tape to ta- or wire to wire number one. And then the 18th hole on the last day happens the 18th hole on the final day played as the most difficult hole on the entire golf course that day and Akshay Batia made it look way harder (laughs) he ends up three putting after a fantastic and I'm telling you a fantastic second shot his tee shot goes 300 yards gets it right into the fairway then his second shot is 173 uh, 173 yards get it to the high part of the screen and the pin is the furthest back on the screen it can be he gets it to the uh, high left spot of the screen has about 20 feet 25 feet left for birdie and to guarantee a win here at the rock and mortgage classic and it's looking like he's gonna get his first ever or his first career win on tour Akshay Batia, who has been playing some fantastic golf or sorry second career win on tour third career went on tour i am uh, all over the place now he won earlier this year i forgot at the valero texas open uh but he would have gotten his third career went on tour for the 22 year old it is unfortunate however sorry i had his uh post round press conference stuck in my head and it's uh, to me it seemed like he hasn't won on tour before but he definitely has uh looking at his tour profile but he ends up three putting and it, i mean it's a brutal three putt the the th- the first putt it was a speed control putt make sure it doesn't go far make sure you give yourself a chance at getting par on this hole and then the fourth the, the fourth putt or the sorry the second putt is just it needs that you need to have it and it needs to go down but it doesn't and that's the end for Akshay Batia's uh Rocket Mortgage Classic win uh it it's hard He's been playing some fantastic golf, however, as of late. Dating back to the Memorial Tournament, the last four tournaments that we've seen on tour this year. Fantastic golf, like I said. T2 at the Rock... T2 at the Rocket Mortgage, T5 at the Travelers, T16 at the U.S. Open, T22 at the Memorial, and I believe he was in or around the lead the last three weekends on tour he is playing some fantastic golf he has i think he's played in every tournament dating back to the wells fargo championship in a row yeah i believe so so that is what two months straight of him uh playing on tour and playing every single tournament which is very impressive we see a lot of guys taking breaks and I believe he's in the field for the John Deere Classic as well, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure I do have the field pulled up for that. Uh, actually, it looks like he's not in the field, as I believe he would. Yeah, he is not in the field for the John Deere, so he's getting a much-deserved rest here this upcoming weekend. Um, but for Akshay Batia, he really had this one, and it just kind of slipped out the palm of his hands. Uh, the rest of the leaderboard, uh, Minwoo Lee made a charge on Sunday, 69. Davis Thompson made a charge on Sunday, 68. Uh, two guys that weren't in the final two pairings but didn't make it make an attempt at winning this one. But as for the final pairings, played pretty bad. Uh, who, who was in it? It was Cam Davis. It was Akshay Batia, Aaron Rye, who also got a 72, and Cameron Young, who got a 73, who will be talking all about Cameron Young in the fifth segment of the night. Uh, But looking down the leaderboard, some of the amateurs that played some really good golf, uh, Luke Clanton 
T10 as an amateur, 20-year-old out of Georgia. Uh, very impressive for him. Uh, some other young names, Neil Shipley, uh, 11 under T20. He had some fantastic... Uh, he had a fantastic Thursday and Friday up to a kind of challenging weekend, 70 and 72, unable to get his name up there towards the top of the leaderboard. Other young guys in this field, uh, I believe you had Ben James, an amateur. He was T44. Uh, I know Michael Thornionson didn't make the cut, which was very disappointing for him. Uh, other names that didn't make the cut, Miles Russell, the 15-year-old that we were talking about, uh, wasn't able to play into the weekend, but he did have an under par a day on Friday, so very impressive with him. Uh, Jackson Koibun, uh one of the better college golfers that there is from Auburn, uh, he got cut as well as he was even a par. And I think that wraps it up for the bigger amateur names. Um, some names that did withdraw: David Lipsky, Will Zal Torres withdrew, and Alejandro Tosti also withdrew after Thursday as well. Uh, so going now into the superlatives after talking about that leaderboard, uh, my best driver of the weekend was Luke Clanton, the amateur Luke Clanton, which I, I love when amateurs just go out there and play some fantastic golf. And let me tell you, he really wanted to go out there and get it in this one. He was fourth in distance, 14th in accuracy, and second in strokes gained off the tee. Uh, he was first overall in total driving, <clears throat> very, <clears throat> sorry, very, very impressive driving out of Luke Clanton. Uh, that's one to be, be proud of if you are Luke Clanton going on tour and just kind of, well, this is the tournament to make a name for yourself, right? We talked about it on Thursday, how the Rocket Mortgage Classic can really be that tournament for you to kind of put yourself out there, maybe get a tour card from winning it. And Luke Clanton didn't leave anything on the table here. Really, T10 is something to be extremely proud of if you are Lou Clanton, the amateur out of Georgia, 20 years old, being able to play some good golf. Uh, best irons goes to Akshay Batia, and it hurts me to say, uh, he should have won this one, man. He really, really should have, and I was, at, I'm was i going to 100% admit to rooting for him on Sunday, and he did just kind of blow it. Uh, very disappointing for me. Second in strokes gained on approach. First in greens and regulation for the a weekend. Hitting 87.5 greens in regulation. Very, very impressive stat there from Akshay. Uh, and he was also seventh in proximity to hole. Uh, on his irons, he would hit it within 30 feet of the hole pretty consistently, which is very, very, very impressive. And that's on average. So, you know, you have your outliers, especially with a 620-something yard hole. You end up having that average be a lot higher for the weekend than it usually would be. And he still has it around where the you know best players on tour put it within their proximity so impressive impressive stuff from Akshay Bati on the irons just unfortunately not able to do it in and around the green best wedges it's Minwoo Lee from the from the weekend he was first in strokes gained around the green 17th overall in scrambling but for this weekend uh with a lot of these guys hitting greens in regulation uh the scrambling numbers don't uh disappoint me too much with Minwoo Lee <clears throat> He had 22 shots, and this is really my apologies. <laughs> my apologies. Uh, but this is really where he separated himself with his wedge game. With 22 shots from off of the green this weekend out of his 72 holes, he averaged 4 feet from the hole on those wedge shots. Which, I mean, you can't place it any better than that. That's impressive. He was number one in that stat, and I had to give uh, I had to give some gas to that because it absolutely deserved it. And the best putter was Taylor Moore. He was second in total putting. He was uh, top three in strokes gained uh, with putting. So I put him as the best putter. As uh, not a lot of these guys had difficult putts, so it was hard to separate out with the best putter. But I elected to go with Taylor Moore. Uh, it was impressive what I saw from him from the weekend. Uh, and he ended up with T10 with it, so I think it's deservingly so uh, that he is the best putter. Uh, <clears throat> my most surprising, as I am looking for him, there it is, Davis Thompson. I had to scroll back up to the top of the leaderboard for that. My most surprising is Davis Thompson. He finished T2. He's twenty, uh, the 23-year-old golfer out of Athens, Georgia. Let me make sure I get that correct. 25-year-old uh, 
25 year old golfer out of Athens, Georgia. He was born in Georgia from Atlanta. Uh, he has three top tens this year. Not really, though, consistently finishing at the top of the leaderboards. Looking at his placement, uh, it was a T9 at the U.S. Open that maybe you could have uh, inferred that he has something like a performance like this available to him. But T2 at the Myrtle Beach Classic doesn't really leave me that uh, impressed. And for the rest of the year, I mean, cut, cut, T47, T24, cut, T57, uh, T23, T45, like... It's not that great when you're looking at Davis Thompson's uh, tour record here and his results, but able to go out there and finish T2. Now he's pretty high up there. I'm sorry, as my voice cracks. He's 51st in the FedEx Cup rankings. He needs to be top 50 for that BMW Championship at the end of the year, top 30 for the Tour Championship at the end of the year. We'll see if he can make a charge. As the 70th, he is 70th in the official world golf rankings. I expect that to increase throughout the season. He's been playing some fantastic golf. Uh been a professional golfer for the last three years and is really showing uh that now is when he is going to separate himself <clears throat> my most disappointing and, and it might just be because i hyped him up so much no it's not miles russell because i did expect miles russell to get cut he's 15 years old to be fair uh my most disappointing is michael thorniansen uh thorniansen maybe i i think it's thorniansen thor thorniansen that's going to be a difficult one. I'm going to need to hear the commentator say it a few times to make sure I get that one correct. But for Michael, he is the number one PGA Tour University golfer. He had it, he got his tour card because of it, and he got cut again. Uh, well, maybe this is his first time being cut, but he didn't have a great showing last week at the Travelers uh, with, on his PGA Tour debut. This is his second professional tournament, and he is unable to... Uh, make the cut line here. He finished uh, three under, so only one back of the cut line. But it was a 73 on Friday that got me to say this. He had a triple bogey on the par 4 13th. That, I mean, it, it was it was a disappointing one for him. And I think he would probably admit to it being disappointing. Uh, all over the place with his uh, irons here, trying to lay up. But it just didn't work too well for him. So, yeah, I do have Michael Thornton as the most disappointing golfer from the weekend. So that'll wrap it up for the second segment here, talking about the weekend superlatives and leaderboard review. When I come back from my second break of the night, we're going to be talking about the Netherlands denying Olympic golfers from competing in Paris. <laughs> 